again. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Cozy Corner of Cinema. Thank you for choosing to click on this episode, whether you are on YouTube or Spotify. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks for making the conscious effort to decide to tune in. This is episode number 129, and it's being recorded on Monday, September 16th, 2024, at exactly 10.30 p.m. Uh, Perhaps not exactly. I'm not going to go by seconds, but it is right on the dot. These episodes last generally about a half hour, give or take, if all goes well. And that is what we aspire to. But here we are on a late Monday night. If you're listening to this, it'll at the earliest most likely be on Tuesday, September 17th. I don't normally record this late, but circumstances did not give me the opportunity to record any earlier. So no matter, a full day was had and there's still plenty of work to be accomplished with the remaining hours of the night. There's still writing to be accomplished reading to be accomplished, and if time is on my side, perhaps even another film, but we can see about that. We can't make any guarantees. There are no guarantees in life besides that one day it will be over for us, so that is why we must make the most of it in the time that we have. My voice is cracking there. Throat's a little dry. It's important to stay hydrated, remember, when you get up in the morning, First thing you want to do before you have your coffee, before you have your tea, before you have any food, number one priority is if you are in a sketchy motel, make sure you still have your kidneys intact. You're going to want to need those. Um, But if you're not in a sketchy motel, the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a nice glass of water because overnight our body uses water, we get dehydrated, and in the morning it can actually be a bit more difficult to wake up because we are so dehydrated. So you could even keep a water bottle by the side of your bed or the couch or wherever you choose to sleep. Having one nearby, maybe you even have it before you get out of bed and you go, all right, here we go. I'm ready to start the day. And then you get some food in you. You go off to school. You go off to your job. You go off to the world, man. Uh, And we just kind of keep that process going. We don't lose our creative energy. We use every moment of the day to progress our artistic endeavors. And that is what we will do. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed some of the newer episodes of the show that have been coming out lately. Uh, The next episode of Peephole Pictures will come out most likely next week. I was hoping to get it out this week, but... Uh, It is just not going to happen at this rate. So um, next week will very most likely be it. I can almost, I don't want to make any guarantees, but next week is the most likely at the very latest will be the week after. But um, also I hope if you have listened to the Fred Trilogy discussion episode, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, That was a lot of fun to record. That was uh, Jeremy's idea to to do that. And um, it was a wonderful conversation with Jeremy and Tyler. It was a lot of fun. Um, And there's going to be another episode, not of that, but of something else that's going to come next week, early next week, presumably, if I can get all the editing done in time. But something is being recorded later in the week for the channel, which I was invited on. So that will be uh, hopefully a... An enjoyable discussion, which I think it will. And there's also some other videos or episodes, I should say, that are being planned for after that. So lots to do with this channel, Um, with the Cozy Corner being the spine of it all. No matter what, no matter when these episodes get released, there will always be a new Cozy Corner of cinema. I like to uh, imagine these episodes as something comforting, of some sort of security where you know there's going to be a new episode. It may not be on time, um, but it will be released. I used to try to get these episodes out on a Friday. Sometimes I can get them out on the weekend, and other times I cannot. Lately it has been um, 
I have been unable to get these episodes out on the weekend, so I ended up recording these on Mondays or sometimes on Tuesdays or even Wednesdays at the latest. Wednesdays are usually my absolute cutoff, but that's a rarity as if I uh, don't have any time at all through the week. So um, whether you find these episodes enjoyable or amusing or you find yourself getting recommendations or you just enjoy the talk, um, I, I appreciate this, um, you know, it's, I, I really enjoy doing this, I, you know, if it becomes a chore, if it becomes a hassle, then I won't do it anymore, but I've been doing this for uh, almost three years now, and, uh, well, actually closer to two and a half, I would say. I don't want to totally round up the three years, cause, but uh, I've enjoyed doing this every week, even if some weeks have been harder than others or have been difficult to find the time to put in the half hour to get these done. Uh, to any and all who choose to listen to these, I sincerely say thank you, and I hope I was able to steer some films in your direction, and I hope that if you are listening, you're able to steer films in my direction as well. And films we will talk about. What do we want to talk about? Well, we can talk about many films, because I watched many, many, many films this past week. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about a new film, a new film that was added to Amazon Prime, a film I had my eye on for a little while. The new film, how many times can I say film? Directed by Adam Raymeyer. This new film, Snack Shack, from 2024. It got a small release. I was aware of it was coming out. Um, I was talking with an acquaintance, and we, we, I think, had some of these films that were contemporary period pieces, if that makes sense. I think of um, something like mid-90s, which of course takes place in the 90s, or a film like Dee Dee, which just came out, which um, takes place in 2008. And now we have Snag Shack as well, which takes place in 1991, I believe. Yes, Nebraska City, 1991. Adam Remeyer is an interesting filmmaker. He's done a lot of technical work. If you look at his uh, filmography, he's done a lot of music videos. He's done a lot of bonus features. Um, he's just done a lot of cool stuff. He's also directed a couple films. He's, he uh, came out of the scene with his 2011 feature from The Bunny Game, um, which uh, was received very mixed uh, re- very mixed results. Um, some people have very strong opinions on that film, positively or negatively. Um, it's not exactly my kind of film. Uh, you know, I have my opinions on it, but even watching that, there is a lot of creativity there. It's shot very well. It has an intensity that is consistent and persistent. Um, do I think it lasts for a feature film runtime? I don't, but there is a lot of strong qualities in it, even if I may not be a fan of the film. But what I found so fascinating was that when we're in the mid-2000s, when we were getting tons and tons of these, what they now call red films. I don't know if they ever actually called it that before, but I've heard that term uh, used for these type of very extreme, kind of very shocking, uh, disturbing kind of contemporary horror films, um, thinking of films like the August Underground Trilogy and um, The Life and Death of a Porno Gang, um, a Serbian film. These films that uh, got a lot of attention because of their extreme content. And I think The Bunny Game kind of came in towards the end of, at least, I mean, I, I was living through when a lot of these were coming out, or at least being f- aware of when they were coming out. You know, I remember hearing about this, you know, about Martyrs coming out, and I remember hearing about a Serbian film, and kind of these almost mythical sort of films, you hear the, you hear these playing at festivals, and you hear this extreme content, oh, in this scene, this thing happens, and this scene, this thing happens, and and the bunny game, I think, was on the, 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 the tail end of that, um, but even then, when I was watching more of those extreme kind of disturbing films, even then it wasn't for me. But what I found so um, thrilling about his directed filmography, he's also done a couple of shorts, by the way, but I'm mostly, I'm just talking about his feature films for now. Um, although I don't know what this H.P. Lovecraft Two Left Arms thing is. Um, this is a thing for, I don't know what this is. Okay, so this is a... I thought it was like a documentary or something by the name of the uh, film. 
But I guess this is a feature. A horror thriller from 2013. Well, I can't speak on that because I haven't seen it. But I was very much a, fil- a fan of his 2020 film, Dinner in America. I saw that a couple years ago. Um, I think I actually saw that when I was prepping my, the 2020 episode, or the 2021 episode. I don't remember what year it was. But it was a very well done and a very uh, fun uh, kind of awkward friendship between these two characters uh, these two kind of outsiders, Kyle Gallner is a really angry, you know, he really uh, hardcore sort of guy. He's just, he's overly mad at everything. He loves, you know, he's in a punk band. He likes kind of loud punk music and all that. And he, he is such a distinct, uh, kind of character in his own right. And then you have this girl who is kind of an outsider. She likes that music as well. She's getting bullied. And along the way, the two end up forming a bit of a friendship in a way that's never, um, that's never, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's a comedy throughout. It's, it's, it, a lot of it at times is reminding me of, you know, some of the crazy dialogue, just some of the very sort of like wild insults people would be sit yelling at each other. Reminded me a bit of John Waters at times early on. Um, but I thought it was a very well done film. So I was, I was, I was fascinated with his newest one, uh, Snack Shack, these two kids, um, the hell are their names it was aj and moose and I, I don't i'm not very familiar with any of the actors in this um but i thought everyone in the cast was excellent I, the only one i know was this actor nick robinson who has been in some high profile films he was one of the characters in jurassic world um he was in love simon he's been in some pretty notable films of the past few years let me get a sip of this beverage and Snack Shack, while it has some issues, and I don't think it totally works, I definitely do think the third act stumbles quite a bit. I thought this was an immensely enjoyable film, and I love seeing the evolution of Adam Ray Meyer's career. Because this has a lot of the, uh, at times, extreme kind of sensibilities of dinner in America in terms of the exaggerated characters, the very profane, uh, loud, over-the-top dialogue. Um, But with that said, I think this has um, intentionally more heart than dinner Dinner in America, where that is taking a far more comedic, um, consistently exaggerated route. Um, Even though it does have heart in that film as well, I think the very end of that film... um, is uh, I, I is uh, kind of a contrast to some of the rest of the film, but here it's a bit more sincere, while also never becoming something else. I I was very um, Brian Sauer, who who I, his opinion I respect immensely. He had an interesting take um, on one of the plot points on his letterbox review, which uh, he didn't mark as a spoiler, but it is definitely a spoiler, so I won't say it. And he had a problem with something in the third act, which I can see. And I think the more that I think about it, it does feel a little, um, what's the word I want to look for? It feels a little, I won't say manipulative, because that's not appropriate to say, but I will say it's a convenient plot point for certain characters. Um, Again, minor issues aside, I I think it's a little long, um, but I'm just loving what he is doing with his career. I I really like filmmakers who are doing different things. I I am so disinterested in filmmakers who will do the same kind of film again and again and again. There there, there's so many filmmakers that I just have no um, I have no interest in what they put out. There are filmmakers who uh, I may have liked some of their films at one point, but the fact of the matter is you look at them 20 years later and they're doing the same exact thing. And it's like, okay, well at this point you're just running on autopilot. and somebody like Adam Raymeyer, who I apologize, I'm saying his name incorrectly, who could start out with such an anomaly and an oddity of a film like the bunny game, um, which is such a distinct film in its own right, and then he makes these two, well, I guess three follow-up films. I find that to be the mark of a solid uh, filmmaker and a solid artist. Even if I don't love everything, um, seeing the evolution and seeing the effort and the heart that is put into there kind of triumphs any uh, typical kind of critical analysis because of the context within his filmography. Um, I watched Snack Shack on Amazon Prime. 
I would recommend it. Uh, definitely. I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm not quite nostalgic when it comes to these kind of contemporary period pieces, even something like DD, which I lived through. And I remember, I don't, I don't like nostalgia. I, I don't see the point of it. Um, but even me watching these films, I can still, I, I, I enjoy the energy. I enjoy the vibe. I enjoy the idea of these characters kind of looking back, um, you know, at least from an audience perspective, looking back on perhaps this point in their lives where this, maybe they, maybe this big thing didn't happen, but perhaps this event happened or something notable happened. Um, or in the case of a film like Dee Dee, where you just have this character who um, is feeling kind of like an outsider and he's at a point in his life where he's going into high school and he doesn't really know what kind of person he wants to be and whom he wants to associate with and kind of having to maybe not come to all the conclusions in at the end of the film, but ultimately come to enough situations that it does alter him where when you get to the end of that film, you actually feel like the character... Uh, has gone through changes, uh, and the and you know there are certain characters in the film who change with him, uh, some for better and some for worse. But I, I think that's far more sincere and far more interesting than perhaps a a um, you know one year at summer camp sort of thing and everything changed and you you know you kissed a pretty girl and then you won the you know competition or anything like that. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful film. And uh, on the topic of contemporary filmmakers and new works, uh, I was going to talk about this last week, and I won't go too much into it, because I think if people have wanted to see this, they've probably seen it by now. But I did want to just briefly comment on um, Jeremy Saunier's new film, Rebel Ridge, on, Nef- <laughs> on Netflix. Throat's still dry. You hear the crack in my voice? Good Lord. Jeremy Saunier has a pretty impressive filmography up to this point. His features include Murder Party, Blue Ruin, um, Green Room, Hold the Dark, and now Rebel Ridge. Because I remember hearing about the production of Rebel Ridge. I know that there was an actor who was involved, and you can look it up. Um, I'm not one to gossip. But there was an actor who was involved and was being, according to reports, very difficult to work with and abruptly left the production. And that was the last I heard of it. And then I saw online, somebody said, Jeremy Saunier's new film is out now. I had no idea it even made any progress. That was the first I heard that he had a brand new film out. Because Hold the Dark was 2018. And I have I had no expectations on this. I saw the poster and I said, okay, I don't, I'm not going to know anything about it. I'm just going to watch it as is. And I think that's the best way to watch the film. Not exactly that it's a deep unfolding plot. Because I think even right from the start, you can kind of get an idea of this lead character, Terry, played by this actor whom I'm not familiar with, Aaron Peer, who does a wonderful job in the film. He was at, he was fantastic in the film. Uh, truly a standout. And um, I'm looking at his filmography now, and he's done some TV. He was in the film Old, and he plays the classic character of mid-sized sedan, uh, if you remember that character from the film Old. Um, but in Rebel Ridge, right off the bat, you get something else might be going on with this situation. And from there, we get a solid crime thriller. And that's what it is. It's a good crime thriller. And again, what I'm talking about before with Aaron uh, Wareheim, or no, I'm, yeah, how do I, oh, good Lord, I'm going to mess I'm gonna mess up how I said the name before, Eric Ware. Rare Meyer. Don't even, you know what? Don't even listen to me. Um, I look at the kinds of films like Jeremy Sonia has done, and they are all, I would say, pretty unique from one another. Maybe the closest is Blue Ruin and Green Room in terms of they came out, uh, you know, they followed each other, and the violence in both those films is very ugly and is very harsh. Um, but both have a very somber tone with maybe sprinkles of black comedy here and there. But but they both are such dark films that um, the, it kind of like the, the black comedy, it's, it doesn't kind of alleviate the situation. It just makes things very um, uh, uh, uncomfortable, but in, but in the best possible way. And then Hold the Dark, 
which was a much moodier film, interestingly enough. I wasn't particularly a, a fan of that film, but I found it very interesting what he decided to do with almost these dreamlike sequences in a way. We have uh, Jeffrey Wright in that film and Alexander Sarsgaard. I think Riley Ke- Keough was in that film as well. It's been a couple years since I've seen it, but Rebel Ridge is different than the other kinds of films that he has made. Like I said, it's a solid crime thriller. It's a solid cast. That main guy, uh, Aaron Pierre, is solid. How many times can I say so? Don Johnson, of course, always a pleasure when he pops up. Um, Anna Sophia Robb, David Denman. Uh, it's, a, it's a really enjoyable, uh, good crime thriller, man. I think what it makes up for with some of the script issues in terms of the narrative, I don't think being the sturdiest together, it makes up with great directorial choices, great acting across the board. Jerry Sonia knows what he wants to put in the frame. He knows um, how to make the violence you know, really hurt. He knows how to make really tense sequences when a character gets in trouble. You really do feel it, but you also feel that character has confidence that he can get himself out of it to a certain extent. It's an exciting film, and it's one that um, it's a shame that they kind of get relegated to the streaming services. I would have happily paid you know ten dollars to see this in theaters, but I guess on the other other on the other end of that sword, it allows people more people access to see it quicker. So I, I recommended it to my father. And he watched it, and he thought it was fantastic as well, because he's not somebody who goes to the cinema. I can tell him, hey, here's a good crime thriller, just came out, and he and he was really on top of it, man. So it's cool, it's good stuff. It's, it's a really, really cool time to see these filmmakers. These just really solid contemporary filmmakers just put out this, even if not all the films are great and great and great, just cool stuff, man. I, I'm just like, you know, we got Sean Baker's new film coming out next month, which has been getting great word of mouth. Um, won the Palm Door. I've been hearing S. Craig Zoller is getting into, last I heard, pre-production on his next film. Whether or not that goes through, I don't know. Um, I would recommend, I, you know what, I actually, I'm going to try to find it right now. There's a really a great interview with S. Craig Zoller, where if anyone wants to be, if anyone is a creative type, or if anyone is thinking that like, oh, you know, whatever I do, you know, it's, I, you know, no matter how much work I've into it, it never, you know, I never end up uh, getting, you know, I'm, I'm writing all this stuff, I'm directing all this stuff, and, uh, it's, and you know, it's not getting me anywhere, but um, I want to see if I can find the episode really quick. It was on Spotify. Of course now I won't be able to find it. It was a... I mean, if you go on... Here we go. I got it right here. It's from the World... I mean, I'm sorry. It's from the Word Balloon Comics Podcast. They have a... This is from February 2023. And I cannot recommend that interview enough. That was one... I think that interview was actually so good I listened to it twice. For anybody who was feeling down... Anybody who thinks that they're putting in all this work and it's for nothing, um, when you hear just how much S. Craig Zoller does, how much he writes, how much he creates, and how much you never see any of it. He talks about all the screenplays that he's written, and he finally sells them, and nothing happens. And then he gets Puppet Master made, but it's not the kind of film he wanted to make. So he finally gets these films done, and he's adamant. And he says, I want Final Cut on this or I'm not doing it. He's He had an opportunity to do another film, but they didn't want to give him Final Cut. Um, I think it was a case where he was disputing. There was, I don't want to butcher a story. I don't want to make anything up. But he was very adamant that he had Final Cut, which is very bold. And somebody who was willing to kind of risk not getting the film made at all, um, I find it be very bold and um, very... Um, uh, uh, very inspiring, the confidence that he has, um, and um, and I've I've all three of his films so far. He's three and zero. I I think you know Bone Tomahawk is great. Um, Dragged Across Concrete is really good. I've been I actually wanted to rewatch that. And Brawl and Cell Log ninety nine I think is fantastic. I think that's one of my favorite films of the twenty first century so far, and it's a confidently directed. Uh, speaking of Don Johns as well, a a dark and but funny and ultra violent and um just total black comedy i mean dragged across concrete as well has some great black comedy and that there is a gag uh, that happens at the very end involving vince vaughn's um fiance that is so it's, it's one of these things where in the moment I, I i didn't even know how to react but in retrospect i found so funny with s craig zeller choosing to go that way 
that when you first watch it, you may not even fully register. You might just you might just be watching the film, but it's one of these things where I, th- I thought about it, and I thought that was one of the, I just thought that was so funny what he chose to do with that character, and especially as you know, if you're watching halfway through the film and he has all this build up, all this build up to where you think it's gonna be a plot point, and then he just pulls out the rug underneath you, and I love that. I love his work, and then you hear him. He's he's a novelist. He makes heavy metal music. I mean, truly an inspiration. If you're sitting there and let's say you're you're hammering away your screenplays, your novels, you're you know practicing guitar all day, you're you're painting, you're drawing, you're trying to get your film made, and, and you're kind of walling. You're saying, "What's you know, it's all for nothing. Who's gonna see this? Who's gonna read this? Um, you know, I've been putting in years of work on this, and I'm not getting anywhere." Um, I tell you, you just keep with it, man. Just keep working on your art. Keep working on your craft. Um, if you've put in all that time and energy, what are you going to get by giving up now? You look at someone like like Bukowski. He didn't start getting recognized for his writing in t- until he was in his 50s, man. And he was somebody who was really trying to get his writing out there. Or Mario Puzo, who you know was putting off writing The Godfather because he took the advance and he just wanted to be with his family. He was like, he was like you know, he was so disheart- disenheart- disenchanted by his previous book not getting the attention that uh, he wanted that he was like whatever this this mob story whatever it is man it's sort of like you know I think people kind of focus way too much on um, just unrealistic scenarios like sort of or, or, or uncommon scenarios yes you know Orson Welles was 24 when he made Citizen Kane or uh, you know, James Hetfield was 19 when he, you know, did the first Metallic album. Yeah, that's great. They were young and they were had such a bold and um, a bold vision to put these things out. But I, it's never too late. Look at Rodney Dangerfield, one of the funniest comedians. He is, and people consider him to be one of the later. He, he got started later in his life, and the legacy and the impact that he's left is, it's there. You know, it, he because he kept at it, man. And we still talk about them, and it doesn't matter how late it is, man. But if you want to do something, you just got to keep with it. There is no, oh, I'm too old for this now. Oh, well, I got a family now. I'm in my 40s. I can't be a novelist. I can't be a filmmaker. It's like, brother, you absolutely can. You just put in whatever time you get. You know, you have your own responsibilities. You have your own life. It's difficult, and we all have our own kind of lives to deal with. But you can do it. You just got to keep at it. Does that mean guaranteed success or guaranteed recognition? Absolutely not. But if you stick with it, I swear to God, man, you're going to feel so much better in the long run. But it is your life and your choices. It's inappropriate for me to make any sort of hearty recommendations as long as you're not beating you know, other people up. You're not hurting yourself as long as you're not like, oh, I can't feed the wife and kids today because I spent all my money on gambling and smoking crack and you know, sticking crack pipes on my ass. I wouldn't recommend any of that, man. I'd probably recommend using that money to you know, get some food, you know, get like some good food. But, uh, you, know, it's, it's, you know, only so much you can do on this side of the microphone. But... Um, yeah, it's never too late, man, to just kind of do what you want to do. Because right after this, man, when this when this episode is finished, when it's recorded, you better believe I'm getting right back into my writing, man. Whether or not it sits in a drawer and nothing ever happens to it, you know, I you just keep on working on the next one. If you're sitting there and um, you know you're like, this isn't this isn't any good, you know. I always think about one of my favorite quotes in any film when when from Ed Wood when he's talking on the phone. His film's a disaster. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not what they want it to be. And he's on the phone. He says, you know, worst movie you ever seen? Well, my next one will be better. And it's funny in the moment, but it's words to abide by. So if you're working on your drawing, your painting, your art, your um, whatever, and it's the worst thing, it's the worst screenplay ever, it's the worst novel ever, it's the worst film ever, well, there you go, man. You've made the worst thing ever. You can only go up from here. Second novel, second screenplay, that's also awful. Okay, well, let's take the lessons there. Is it worse than the first one? Okay, well, then you can only go up from there, you know, man? And you just keep on working at it, keep on going at it until you, you know, find a point when you feel you have achieved something that you're looking for. Um, I know the conversation kind of trailed off there at the end, but either way, thank you guys for listening to another episode. There's some fun episodes that will be coming out soon, some fun films to be discussed. I'm going to get this episode out into the vast reaches of the Internet worldwide so you may listen wherever you are in the world. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful night, a wonderful day, evening, whenever you're listening to this. Make sure you drink plenty of water. I got a Charlie horse yesterday morning, and good lord.
Okay, thank you guys for listening so much. Until next time.